So how we doing folks? Welcome back to the channel and part two of the tests carried out on the Kaiwitz HT208D current clamp meter. Now I've actually had accuracy problems on both DC and AC current measurements predominantly at higher amperages so I might as well just put the tables up that I've made up right now from the readings that I've taken. So you can see in this first table this is the usual measurements that I'll make on a current clamp and they're extended out to the maximum range that the instrument can read which in this case is 1000 amps with the Kai Wheats. AC and DC are both same tolerance for standard measurements which is 2.5% plus 8 digits and you can see that for the first three readings they're okay. The next reading is 10 amps um, it starts to lose its accuracy there and then from there on in they are actually all out of specification to what the manufacturer has given me. What's also interesting is that below 60 amps the readings tended to be lower than the specification and above 60 amps the readings tend to be higher than the specification allowed. However this instrument as well as doing AC-DC also has a VFD mode. If I change it to VFD mode and I conduct the same set of measurements as shown in this table here you can see that I'm all in tolerance. Now if you actually look at the measurements in detail they're either very close to the values obtained during the standard AC measurements or they're just slightly below that. However the tolerance in VFD mode is 5% plus 10 digits so that's why all those readings are actually within tolerance. So we'll get rid of the tables um, and we'll do a few measurements. So the setup that I've got here, if I just pull this down a little bit, you can see the current clamp is sitting on a little table here. I've got a single loop going through the actual clamp. Uh, this is plugged into my test set running at the back there and I'm using the KM601 as a comparison for current measurements up to 10 amps. So we can we switch to DC at the moment. So we'll just pump in the 0.5 amps and you can see that there. So I didn't actually zero the DC, did I? So, but you can see I've got five amps on the KM601. So let's just, uh, well. So let's zero that now. Go again, and you see 0 0.493, 0 0.475, a little bit better than last time. And creeping up there, um, but it was in uh, tolerance at these levels. There's your 1 amp, 0 0.98, 0 0.99, 0 0.95 on the current clamp there, all creeping up again. Um, so let's print to 5 amps. So 5 amps you see a little bit more of a differential starting to occur. It's close to the 4.8 on the current clamp but we're still at 4.95 on the KM601. Um, so 8 amps was about the limit that I had. 7.70, 7.73. Again 7.93 so you can see the differential starting to occur. 10 amps is obviously the maximum that the KM601 will go to. And we are actually out of tolerance with that reading, 9.68 gets 9.94. But you can see it's genuine, 9.94 is pretty much 10 amps going through that the instrument should be reading. Um, AC does read exactly the same. So I'll just change it to AC. Um, need to change the instrument over. There's AC there. Similar sort of reading, uh, although you see this is also a little bit more slightly out of tolerance reading as well in, uh, in comparison to the DC measurements that it's made, which is not unusual. Instruments generally struggle to measure AC uh, more than they do measuring DC. Okay, so I'll, I'll stop those and I'll have to do a reconfiguration so that I can bring the, the multi turn current clamp table in and test at higher currents. So we've reset everything and we're on our current clamp table now. We're on the 50 turn coil. I can leave the KM601 in for the first test because I just put 10 amps in, which should be giving me 500 amps out on the instrument there, AC. 
you can see I've got 9.813 that's not really changed and we're on 522.4 amps which is quite a bit above the expected 500 amps which you can see I mean if you went by the meter here I would be injecting in less than 500 amps uh, with a 50 turn coil um, so that's 500 amps there what I will just do is just take this back to the range setting so 1.2 amps uh, so this is 1.2 amps being injected which times the 50 should give me 60 amps it stayed on the 60 amp range at the moment so you can see the reading is actually lower than the 60 amps being injected at 57.33 um, if I just put it up a little bit more and take it over so we've now switched range sticking in 1.5 amps which should give you the 75 amps so we're not too bad with that reading and what I will just do is go back to the 1.2 amps which would be 60 amps and you can see it stayed in the 600 amp range and now I'm reading 62.3 whereas injecting going upwards I got a different value and got 57 amps so the meter seems to mess around a little bit at the point where it changes the range um, so what I'll just have to do now is stop this and just take the KM601 out of circuit purely and simply because I'll go above 10 amps and that's going to create me problems. So we're now just wired direct through the coil. I can't do anything now with regard to a check function because I'm going to be going over 10 amps uh, and reading this. Let's go back to the 10 amps in actual fact. And then we're back to our 500 amps there. So 10 amps being injected, 522 amps on the meter. Okay, so we'll go straight up to 1,000 amps. Let's change it on AC. And you can see there that it goes over range. Um, it won't read it. Um, just to show what's going on here, I can just put this uh, little Aoki instrument in there, which also can read 1,000 amps AC. Although I don't know whether you can see that. There's no light on this, unfortunately. So that's 1,003 amps that it's come out with there. I also have for a cheapo one, I've got this Infuridor one. Uh, you can see that one, hopefully, 1,007 uh, 1, amps on that one. There's a comparison. Uh, so it does move about a little bit, uh, but not too bad. And finally, I've got this RS Pro unit again, 1007 amps. I'm not sure whether you can see that on that, so let's uh, hold him again and just show you there 1007 amps. Um, so, yeah, do struggle with this one. Um, I could take him back down to 19 amps, and we are on. It should be 950 amps um, and again you can see that there's 989 it's pretty much out of the two and a half percent spec if I stick the inferior back in 958 959 a little bit high but much tighter tolerance than the Kai Wheats is showing me um, so yeah uh, let's just turn him off and put him back in um, I'll also just put this table up. This is a comparison of different current clamps I've got and the actual accuracy they offer in AC, DC. Um, you can see that the accuracy offered on the Kaiweet HG208D is fairly mediocre. Um, at 2.5% it's quoting a, a better accuracy than some of the other instruments I've got, certainly against the Infurador that you've seen there, which actually does give a much better reading. Um, in contrast, it's also not the most accurate current clamp that I've got available to me. So you would expect, if a manufacturer is specking at 2.5%, they really should be able to meet it because there are manufacturers out there that can meet a bit better accuracy specification than the Kaiweet instrument has. Okay, moving on to inrush current measurement. I'm just going to pull this page up from the manual and show you this because um, I do have to commend Kaiweet for this. This is the first time I've seen a really good explanation of how a current clamp 
or how their current clamp is actually measuring the inrush function. You can see here they've done a little uh, plot there and it's shown you that that inrush magnitude is a differential between the steady state current and the peak current. So I've got this set up for 100 milliseconds. Uh, if I just measure the 5 amps, so it should be around about 250 amps uh, and then dropping. So we'll give that a run and we'll see what it comes back with. To get into inrush, we're on AC, so we VFD mode and then we hit inrush there. Okay, so we'll set up and we'll just hit our go button. So that's 258 amps. So, so for a 250 amp inrush, and it's showing me 258, we know it reads a little bit high anyway. Uh, so that's all pretty good. I'll just change this. It's got seven amps, so that should give me a higher one. Uh, just curious, I don't know what happens, whether you have to reset this after an initial measurement. So we'll go again. Okay, so it's run through that test and it looks like it didn't change the value there, didn't it? So it looks like you do have to reset uh, and come back and go to inrush again and then we'll run it again and we should get a higher reading this time around which should be uh, 350 ish amps and above 364 amps which again we know will be a little bit high so yeah so unlike the FLIR instrument that I tested last time around um, this one you do have to reset this with every inrush measurement that you make what we'll also just do just to show you the difference I will uh, just change him to min max and just see, run him again, see what he produces. Okay, so what you see there that is a differential between taking a min max measurement and the inrush measurement. You can see that the instrument couldn't change range quick enough for that little uh, test program that I have. So what I'm just going to do is change the range manually uh, so that we are at 600 amps. Go back to min max or maximum, I should say. Press the go button again. Let's see what we get this time. So 205. So the maximum function cannot read as fast a pulse as the inrush function can. Uh, I don't know what happens if I go to min now. So it looks like the max and the min are just functions that record those values. Let's just run it without anything on and just see what happens. So we've finished our little program. Let's just go through max. It didn't record anything, min, it didn't record anything. Okay, so you, you have to have it set to max, it only record the maximum value, um, or you set it to min to record the minimum value um, during a fluctuating signal, I guess. But min max function is nowhere near as quick as the inrush function. So hopefully that little demo shows you the differential between the two. So yeah, uh, that's it for this video. Um, just a little more in-depth look at the current function on the Kai Wheats current clamp there. I'll have to progress that one way or another to see if I can sort out what the issue is. That's all there is for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one.